Okay, we're going to finish up part two here with Brother William Zimmerman, affectionately known in our community, uh, me growing up especially as Billy Jam. And so we're going to we're going to get into his life experience, and we want to see uh, the question that we ask Brother Jam is give us his experience of Steubenville, the black experience in Steubenville uh, during the time from the time Martin Luther King was assassinated. Uh, a little bit before that also, but up until now, present day. And try to ask the question, are we better off now and or, 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 than we were then? Or are we about the same place? Or uh, are we worse off? We're just trying to look at the different experiences that, that was going on in Steubenville as it relates to what went on nationally in that black experience. Uh, again, hit the subscribe button uh, if you want to get the uh, a part of this channel. Also hit the notification so anytime we put something new out there, you'll be notified of it. And also hit the like or dislike button um, if you like what we're saying. And then any comments and questions, of course, uh, go ahead and get those into us. So, Brother Jam, I want to start back with us and go over a little bit of review of what you've already told us in, mm -hmm. in part one of this, this interview. You talked about 1961 as a young man being one of the first families in the North End Projects out in the North End. Uh, I'm about 10, 15 years younger than you, um, so in that range anyway. Um, about 10 years, rather, younger than you. And uh, so I remember these things at a different you know, rate, some of these things I didn't know. So being that it was 1961 when those projects originated there is something that I never knew and you gave me a insight. And you also talked about being in 19, around the time of 1968, um, being uh, going to, traveling to Cincinnati for a basketball camp and meeting somebody that you didn't know at the time and they weren't who they are to us now in, in our uh, history. Oscar Robertson. Oscar Robertson. Um, you also talked about uh, later on being a part of a community that had an all-black ran community center, the Community Recreation Center, I think is what CRC. it was called, the CRC, and they affectionately known as the pool the also, pool. which was up there on Adam Street, I believe, um, right off of Adam Street there, and it was black, black ran. Um, also, it was a pool and an actual, you know, uh, center. And um, I asked you at that time, had there ever been another one like that here? And you said no, and, mm -hmm. or anything like that. And you said no, and I asked you, was it needed? And you said wholeheartedly. Oh, God, I um, And that's a duh, I guess, because I, I know it's needed, but I just want to get your opinion. If there's a reason you say no, we don't need it, or we what we have is sufficient, or what we had was sufficient. Mm -hmm. You also talked about the black church and the structure of that time that you really thought was, was something good, and it was a good a time to grow up in the neighborhood and the community because it was structured and it had a strong black church is something else that you mentioned. Also, you went into athletics. You talked about some of the icons that was actually from here, talking about the Jeter family and Mr. Jeter being that, that head Jeter, so to speak, um, and what he had accomplished and what he was to Steubenville. Um, but one of the things I wanted to check on that was interesting is you talked about when you first met Mr. Jeter, he had been, you didn't know this, but he had been an NFL player. He had been a standout at Steubenville Big Red High School, one of the best players ever to be at Big Red. Uh, he followed somebody back then who would be well known as Puck Bergwin. You right. know, he would have knew of him well because he was a, you know, a little bit closer to that time. Um, and that when you met him from all that success, you met him as a janitor at Grant School. A janitor. Um, I thought that was something to highlight because I just, it just doesn't jive that somebody can be, reach that success, come back to their community, and the best could be done as a janitor. Now, what I don't want to do is, um, is minimize for a black man at that time to have a job. Mm -hmm. He may have gotten that job very easily, meaning Maybe, yeah. because of his success, it was right. easy to give him that. Right. But and so, so I'm sure it was great for him and his family and to give some. Because they didn't get paid a lot of money back then, obviously, if hardly I would any say not. in the pros wasn't the juggernaut of a financial empire as it is now, an economic empire that it is now. But but again, I don't want to minimize that that um, it didn't help him when he got back to, to raise his family, which we know of his family, beautiful family and everything. Um, I don't want to minimize that. It's just that to me, I, I would have thought with somebody that success would have been treated a little bit better and given a little more power and authority and uh, within that school system. Or that that um, uh, the athletics or what have you, head coach of the high school that he so was so prevalent in, uh, but it wasn't. And and so I just wanted to touch on that. Then you talked about some other icons, and one you named, and I want you to go in a little bit further because that we're about to get to that time. Um, is uh, King Ico and the Colbreth family, and my what favorite they were, person in the world, King your Ico. favorite person in the world, and so. Uh, 
this, I want to spend a little bit of time on him and, and, and how he influenced you and how he influenced all of us. And, uh, and I, and I called him a celebrity, but I also called you a celebrity. And you said, you didn't know about that celebrityism and what I'm getting ready. I'll tell you ahead of time, I'll give you the answer and we'll chase the, chase okay. the question. Right. But the answer is if King Ico was a celebrity to you and the people that you went to school with, how could you not have been a celebrity to those that I went to school with? And because you provided the same thing for those of us who went to dances that you were DJs at. And you did the same things to some extent. Now you may you may say he did more in the community or other things, but again, coming from a kid that's 10, right. 15 years old, and hearing right. and hearing what I'm you guys mean. Uh, um, uh, but to emulate Ico was just something we were doing. We thought the whole world saw Ico. Like I said, national. Billy, news, you know you know a guy named by, you know news. you know somebody by the name of Myron Walker. Yeah, you remember you were, when you first hear about his name. Uh, I, Do you I remember? remember that? No, but not this. Uh, I apologize to my daughter and and Good. those those who never really heard me talk in this type of language because I used to talk yeah. like this all the time. All right. But he would walk down the hall saying, "Damn about Billy Jane, <laughs> damn Billy Jane." Well, he used to walk down said. the halls of Big Red. He's a white. He's a white dude. You know. Oh, Myron. okay. Yeah, he's a white know, dude. Yeah, young yeah, white yeah, dude. Yeah. He wasn't that yeah. cool, but yeah. but he he knew some music a little bit. But you were that type of. Like everybody knew who he was talking about. Everybody knew who he was emulating. Yeah. So my point is, that's celebrity. Well, that, that's you know what I mean. So, so that's what I'm saying, and I'm not saying that I could, I'm not trying to put yeah. you on the same plane. Yeah, not on I'm the just same put, plane. Exactly, and I'm not doing that. I, yeah. I, I appreciate your humility yeah. uh, for that. But the yeah. point is, is that uh, you talked about Ryan Terry. He's a Jeter. He's a Jeter. And there's Perry Jeter. And there's Perry Jeter. And they're both great athletes. Great athlete. But he may not want to be put on the level of Mr. Jeter right. because he don't may not think he rises to the level of Mr. Perry Jeter. True, true. But in all actuality, as an athlete, they may be equal. They both got to the league. True. He may have been in the league longer than Mr. Jeter, but he may never want to be. Yeah. But yeah. to some, Ryan Terry is. I see where you're going with that. He's all yeah. that. So, but, so I just don't want but, you to. But, I, I, but I don't. I don't. Me, the reason I want to do that is I want to keep some responsibility on you. Okay. I don't want you to. Because what you might right. be doing is trying to obligate obligate whatever that nice fancy word is but get away from the responsibility you have that i'm not gonna let you get away from it the accountability you have to me okay you know because right. you are a peer right. and no matter what mistakes you've made in the realms that you could have made them or mm -hmm. no matter how big you are in other realms in the realm of we had some heroes or we had some celebrities mm -hmm. that we like there's people who became djs maybe kevin terry was a dj because of you every yeah i Okay, so, I would say so, but his family is music. But Ico started. I understand. With it a I understand. Lot. So anyway, I just wanted. I don't want to park okay. on that too long, and I don't want to. It you all know, starts with him. And, and, and so when you so when you talk about him, I do want to give a a direct line, mm -hmm. okay. you know, from mm -hmm. him of what he did and how he uh, you know helped you and helped the kids around you or mm -hmm. or the influence that he had on it, and it let you know that, that that you had that influence to some extent. Um, so that's not in 1973 that you met uh, King Ico and at the dances that you were a part of that he would put on, which was yeah, first which gave the kids dances. something to Every do. Every weekend. Every weekend. Exactly. It got the kids to be somewhere and not be out there just right. running around. Uh, 1977, you went to West Liberty. From West Liberty, right. you went to Alabama. Uh, that was trying to get to Alabama State. State where I posted but you, yeah, but, grade, you, yeah. but you went to Alabama, which you, where you had a great experience, great experience. your time. And again, what we did touch on in the first part was that when you say you had a great experience, what you're doing is saying all the positives that you experienced, you consider that a great time. Great time. You're not saying that every moment down in Alabama was great mm -hmm. because you still experienced the things that was going on that the civil rights struggle fought against. Very you, still, much so. you experienced the Jim Crow. You experienced the, the civil rights fight, the, the disrespect, the oppression. And we went over a couple of You're not of loud over there. You're not loud over there. Yeah, exactly. So you experienced that. So again, we want this to be a positive light uh, and, and for the black community to figure out where they've been, uh, where they've what they've come through, where they're at now, and understand that they may mm -hmm. not be better off right. than when Dr. King died. We just may be in a different place, but not necessarily a better place. And so the yeah. as we know, the struggle continues, the fight continues, but the solution should still be sought. And try to figure them out through what we've experienced. So in 1980 is where we park ourselves at the 80s. Mm -hmm. So in the 80s, you also, we find out you got into fatherhood. Right. 
Um, we also mentioned that you were you felt you were pretty much equipped for several reasons. One, you had a job, you was interested in employment. You also had the uh, desire to take care of your family and, right. and raise your kid. It was a boy or girl? Boy. Your boy, your first Named boy. Named him after me. Named him after you, so uh, William Named Zimmerman him. Jr. Um, you had a son, you had a wife, you had a strong family support. We identified that, that you had the support Very also from both sides of the family, uh, your in-laws and your mm -hmm. family. And so um, so now you're raising a family and you're 20 some years old, 20 years old. Uh, so how did you how did you raise the family? What were some of the things you did in your life and how was student mill at that um, time? It was like I said, I had I had help. Um, never had a babysitter. OK, the kids are coming. Mm -hmm. DJing with Ico. Okay. And as a young man, like you say, I'm saying things uh, and mind you, I can't DJ. I'm now, when you say DJing with DJ, not with him. OK, I at said, the same I time, my own equipment. Because of him, or he's one of the influences. Him. Yeah. Okay. Every, there's nobody else to watch, and mm -hmm. I start DJing. And mm -hmm. I'm making good money, but okay. I can't DJ. And Ico helped me set up my first equipment. When you say you can't we, DJ. You mean you weren't? I good mean, at I wasn't it. good at. It. Okay. So you just you seen him do it. I'm gonna try to right. do it, kind of like I'm doing. I see people yeah. do Got up uh, interview yeah. shows, and I just decide to get my YouTube channel together and say, "Hey, I think I can do this." True story is I set up at the North End Ball Field. Okay. I set my equipment up to mm -hmm. advertise myself. Okay. I had spent a lot of money on that plane. I had eleven records. Well, no, my dad, my dad. Well, I'm he spent a lot of equipment, no, money on. I'm gonna tell you, my dad took my paychecks. Okay. For two years, and I hated him. Oh, He's okay. the most hated man in the world. Saving you money. So when I graduated, he gave me every penny, nice. and then now still my money, right? Mm -hmm. Now you so hate you for hating him. I still hate him. <laughs> Because it's my money. And I said, Dad, I want to start DJing. Yeah, but you wouldn't he have to says, DJ money if he didn't let you have your checks. You know what he said? What? You could use 10%. So nice. I started with $800. So you come from so a business tells you, mind. That tells you 10% of what 800 is. Yes, my dad right. gave me every, I, 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 I was this big after I accused him of stealing from me. Okay, so that's the black church in him. Yeah, or his mom. Tithing. I would say his mom. Or his mom, that 10%. Mom. My, my dad was ran by his mom. Okay, good deal. So you good deal. Yeah, but and that family, my my grandmothers ran our family. Okay, good deal. So, and then that time the men wasn't. My grandmothers ran the family. <laughs> okay, no problem. So now I start DJing. I take eight hundred dollars. I go to the okay. library real quick, and I look up all this old equipment. So now I got all this equipment. Mm -hmm. I go out to the ball field. I set up my equipment, and believe it or not, horse shows up with Porsche. And Who's horse? Band, horse Hampton. Horse Hampton. Young Horse Hampton. Young Horse At Hampton. So I wait for everybody to start playing basketball. I get ready to start DJing. I can't even hook my equipment up. Ico comes, hooks my equipment up. And that's how I, he says, this is what you need to do. I ain't not plugging in. Then Rockin' Watkins, another guy from Linden Avenue, sees I ain't got no records. He runs home and gets some more Who? records. His name was Rockin' Watkins. Okay, go ahead. And um, he's from Linden Avenue. He used to be in a band. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, I start playing out the ball field. And everybody this, could care this less. Would, this would probably be around 1980? 1980 on okay. the button. And... I got my equipment set up. Ico's all nice, but I'm challenging, you know, hey, the old man is there. He's like, it's a boxing thing, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you're and young and dumb. Yeah, dumb, very. Yeah, yeah. And he's a class act. Okay. He's helping me. Mm -hmm. And everybody I came involved with, he was helping. Mm -hmm. So, so, and he's just so tired, too. He, he, he can't play everywhere. Yeah, because he's probably working in the mill at the time or something. He's working at the mill and he yeah. has a family, but we yeah. don't see that. Exactly. We don't see that. All we see is Ico playing and DJing for us and, Coaching the Biggio girls, his dads, the bands. He was also coaching, or his dad. Was he coach? helped out with that. So he with helped. that, and they funded the Biggio girls by doing his dances and his dad. Oh, okay, and his okay. The first sponsorship I learned was from Mr. Ike Culper of Ico's dance. Mm -hmm. He got the Biggio Lincoln Ford to sponsor the Biggio girls. Billy, did you know that? Billy, why can't why can't you or me or and I'm just going to do this because mm -hmm. I know these guys because they're going to they've been on my interviews. Okay. They'll be on the interviews before you probably right. or after you here shortly because these are taped okay. and we're going to put get them to out. your point. I know. Yeah, you I mean, going. why why can't Roy Mayo and Mike McIntyre and Billy Jam and uh, Billy Mr. Zimmerman and uh, Michael Jed and, and Justice Slappy? Why can't we put our money together and do that? Why can't we just um, get a bunch of girls and or boys and, and say we hey, could do that now? We want to do that. We want to put do, our money here. Just like this is what we're gonna do. If we if you give a thousand, I give a thousand, roll gives a thousand, Jack gives a thousand, just slappy give a thousand, Stefan he'll give a thousand. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be two to kids and we're gonna build mm -hmm. something. And the worst thing can happen is we have a couple seasons and the money runs out because nobody does what they're supposed to do and we right. lose that. Mm -hmm. Is it not worth it? Well or was we it have to do it things change in forty years. So okay. we have to back then um 
it didn't cost that much, but what I'm saying is we got to get a 501c. We can get grants to do this. Okay. Right now, though. I agree about the 501c3. That's, getting, not a, that's not a yes or a no. That's both. Leadership. Because my point is, $1,000 stipulates we got a vested interest. Right. Leadership. But then we can also do what you just told me that, we can that Mr. Ico did. You said he did what? He st it, Mr. Mr. Ike Colbert started the sponsorship. He showed right. He how went to goes. he went to he went to Biggio, but he was sponsoring. So you know exactly what he did. The city. He had concerts. James but, but, Brown. But he went to Biggio to do what? To get a sponsorship. To get some money. To get some money. To name and once he got enough money to name the girls after. And it and it yes. And so so you know what he did. Biggio girls, right? I know what he did. Right. Royal knows what he and did. And they were a class. Jet knows what he did. Justice knows what he did. Right. And we can and uh. Well, talking positive. So let we me, don't know nobody we this. go to? But let me, you know somebody in business? I, I say we don't have to go to nobody. We can do it ourselves. No, no, but, no. My point is, we ain't too proud to beg. And we ain't too proud, ain't to, too beg. proud to beg. But we can do it ourselves, we too. We can do it ourselves, And too. we can beg. Right. And then we can go to government, for what they have set up that we pay taxes yes, to, with the 501c3, and we can do both. I say that to say, or say we, can. we can. do it. Now, if you say we can't, that's uh -huh. something. I say we can. Okay. Because that's something we can talk about, person, too, while we I can. I never underestimate you. Like, what you did with the Tigers. Right. That's that's a national icon i had people everywhere i go i had guys ask me and tell me what how did you do that what, what i said no these are guys i was associated with they put together a program that's better than every program i've seen mm -hmm. and the response you guys got you got kids you got 100 kids overnight these guys can't get two guys mm -hmm. or 20 kids and, and, and that, they can't get them collectively and, and so that, that means never at the same time they have a broken program and what happened was um mm -hmm. I was able to get 30 grown folks. 40. I, we, I remember when we ordered the shirts. Oh, okay. 40. Oh, yeah, for our, our things. I was able to get 40 grown folks to say, oh, yeah, I want that too. Right. That's why I asked you, do you want what that happened or is there something worthy? Yes. And it may not just now be that. Talking. Now well, we're talking. My point is there needs to be yeah. something yeah. that we sit around. We got all these stories and all mm -hmm. this knowledge, all this, all this uh, trial and error, mm -hmm. all this research. Like there's there's things that you're a professional in. I told my daughter the other day. My daughter is in route to she wants to get her PhD. Okay. And so a lot of times I'll call her doctor ahead of time. That's right. Yeah, you know I mean because, we got two in our family. Okay, good. So she's on her way to get it. My That's son, right. I got one already. My I son. consider her too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my good. son, he's got right. a George doctor. Okay, good. You know what I mean? So I just call her that. My point though is I told her this, and, and she, you know, she's. I said you'll probably get mad at this later. But right now, you know, I'm just daddy talking and, and you haven't <laughs> got there yet. She says, daddy, don't call me a doctor. I'm not a doctor yet. Okay. Yeah. You want to be, you right, go, you want to get your PhD? Yeah. Okay. Then you're a doctor because I know you're going to do it. But anyway, I'm going to start calling myself a doctor. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, this show is uh, Mike McIntyre, PhD slash SA. You know what SA stands for? Um, no. Tell me. Self-appointed. I, I like that. Because I got some expertise. Uh, I've got some I research. You that. I can tell you what the, I know some things about kids. From seven to twelve, I know why they're in the state they're in. Right. I understand what can help them. Right. I understand some of the reasons they fail. I understand some of the reasons that can help them succeed. I know their behaviors. I know they have certain medical situations. I know they have such psychological situations. I know their parents. The mm -hmm. reason why they may have something going on at home, what their mm -hmm. reaction is. I know what's happened when they got a good home, what their reaction mm -hmm. is. I know how they intermingle with each other. I know about their behavior patterns. Mm -hmm. I know this from 15 years of experience, 120 to 140 kids every single year. They are different ages, different times, different families, and we deal with them and we see the outcomes. Mm -hmm. Also, I like to say- Go ahead. And so you You're have, very good with that. And I like to say, you also know what's inside a boy. And what- Because I was one. Of. Uh, and my son was don't one. Know. A lot of guys don't know. You know. And I hold okay. you accountable for that. And I agree. And, okay. I, and I'm fine with it. But my only okay. point is at some point. Now you can call yourself PhD for that. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't say that for any right. other reasons because a right. lot of times people don't listen right. to you and you got some type of title. Success. Yes. If you're but, successful, yes. that helps. Exactly. Just like so, you were with the Tigers. So I say that to say we're dropping, you know, again, not to be too off or take anything out of I want us to always kind of recognize what history and what our experiences mean. Mm -hmm. And you dropped on Biggio Girls. Mm -hmm. You said you don't know all the things that created that. But I used to hear that talking to so many people. Oh, remember the Biggio Girls out North End? Mm -hmm. Oh, the North End Field is where the community was at. That's right. Oh, the Biggio Girls, they did this. First yeah. of all. Every Sunday. And all them Biggio Girl women, they say, oh, she used to be on the Biggio Girls. She used to be on the Biggio Girls. Like, they was, mm -hmm. they was a group that's part of the foundation of foundation. our history here. Yeah. And it was positive. Right. 
We would we should want to duplicate things that can duplicate. be positive. Right. It doesn't have to be a girls' softball team, right? But it could be. Well, that's it you know it, yeah. it now, doesn't. Go ahead. I can give myself credit now. That's why when I went to those camps and was exposed to things, mm -hmm. that's what reason I wanted to give back. Mm -hmm. And when I say give back, I wanted to emulate the same things in the community that kids couldn't afford that I was lucky to get, and and my dad put me in those spaces, and I yes. and I thank him for that. But for those to emulate it here, mm -hmm. and on the small level, I knew mm -hmm. I could do that. That's mm -hmm. what's back to being successful. So yes. if you do it and you're successful, that helps perpetuate you a little further, and yes. you're good. But if you're not successful, they'll say, oh, that program ain't going to make it. It's oh, going exactly. to die. I but agree. when they see you know, I was independent, yes. but I had a lot of people behind me. Yes. But the projection was independent. You came, I remember you, um, I believe it's this way. It may not be, but correct me if I'm wrong. You, weren't you the first one to come up with a little kids dunk contest? Yeah, that, I'll, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that's me. It's, it's the um, tiny tot slam dunk. Yeah, tot I seen that. Dunk. I seen that. And they get a trophy. But and after that, I, seen... I learned that you have to let them know now. You have to win after that. But at that level, every kid wins. That's because you're five years and under. Mm -hmm. But I, I, for ten years, I, I was too nice to kids. Mm -hmm. Then when I realized I wasn't helping them, I became tougher, stronger, and giving them more structure. So you had some trial so and they error. Need, of course. And so you have some research. And so now you got some research to talk I'm about good what at happens. Now. I know what we need to be, like I said now, they need structure. I asked them for 20 years, mm -hmm. Michelle Long, I used to ask kids, how come I can't reach this kid? Mm -hmm. How come I can't reach this kid? I had an era of kids go by. You mean, uh, Jimmy Mack, mm -hmm. your area. I said, hey, we couldn't talk to you when you were 12. We couldn't talk to you when you were 15. But now you're 25. Can you talk to these kids? Jimmy just looked at me and said, hey, cuz they... You know, they got to do this. They got, But the, the answer, long, about 10 years ago, I asked a kid, and I want to say this. I said, hey, uh, how come I can't reach you, you mm -hmm. guys? I, I, well, I want to tell you this. You need this. You need this. And you need structure. And you need this. And we're going to help you. I'm in your corner. How come you won't listen to me? And he said to me, the kid said, I'm not supposed to. You're supposed to tell me. <laughs> you're supposed to guide me. And, I looked, and a kid told me that. I looked at him and I said, "You're not." He said, "You're not supposed to be my friend, and you're supposed to tell me and show me." And then I look back at it. Reason I'm good with money, my dad made me. When I work with kids, now I'm gonna pat you on the back. Now you're gonna let me do this. I was made to work with kids. My mm -hmm. my mom wanted me to mm -hmm. do it. My dad made me do it. Mm -hmm. Miss Kurtall came along, and I had to do whatever she asked me to do. Mm -hmm. Forty something years ago, mm -hmm. I was 16 with a car, and. Wasn't allowed out the house. Mm -hmm. I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And I had a car. Mm -hmm. The church asked me to ride the kids somewhere. I said no. <laughs> My mom said, well, think about it. I said no. <laughs> My mom came back and said, well, I told him yes already. My dad said, you better do what she says and don't take no money from the church. Nonprofit right off the bat. And Miss Kirchall said, you're in charge of the boys. After a couple of times, I had some girls mm -hmm. who could do nothing with them. Long story short, that's how I started working. Guys like you, mm -hmm. and I talk with the 100 black men in them, right. there's guys that start working with kids and no one made you. Right. So I commend you, right. even though it's in my blood, yes. but I was made to work right. with kids and it saved my life, I'd say, too. And, and again, I think all I can think about is the first four or five people that I brought this idea to that agreed with me. Because if they had not agreed with me, I don't know that I would have continued. And so I always say it was us. It was us. Now, I, obviously, I know the dynamic of being a leader. I can say us all I want. Um, but when things went wrong or if it had went wrong or things that did go wrong with it, mm -hmm. I've always been blamed for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People now that don't like yeah, it because you, something hey, happened. That's what, a coach did something to a kid I don't know nothing about, but they just put it all on me because I was the head of the Tigers, so to speak. So, um, But I say that to say mm -hmm. and, and take your I take your I accept that and, and appreciate your acknowledgement of that. Um, but again, that makes us, there's a certain amount of, and I said PhD jokingly because people, but it's still, you, I like you at least as an associate's yeah. degree in kids, yeah. in youth, in recreation, in activities for youth, in, in the outcomes of what those things do, which is how, right. which is what you go to school for and you learn how to research something. And then once you research it, you argue for something. And, and so again, um, we part, we're, we're, and where we're at now is we're with King Ico and we're with his mentorship to you. So what you're explaining to us is that 
Uh, you being young, you didn't know nothing about DJ, but you had seen him do it. You decided to do this. Your dad bought you the stuff for it. So you're set up. Um, he, he bought that to you with your own money, correct? Um, he no, money. he let me use my own money. He let you use your own money. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. and, so, uh, and so now you are a year later, six months later, after he told you how to hook mm. these things up. And now you're going around and you're going to start being a DJ and you're making some money. Mm -hmm. But not only are you making money, he's making money. Okay. Right. I want to know, as you tell me a little bit about the next couple of years, as you're beginning of the, the next DJ, couple of years, I want two things wow. you to tell me and, and put it in there, how it became about. The biggest thing I want to know is Buckeye Butch. Um, Buckeye and Butch. Brother Go Goose. Okay. Brother and Goose. and uh, Hollywood. Okay. So I want to know. In these next couple mm. years, how all of them came okay. in this Real also. quick, Buckeye Butch was uh, a young guy mm -hmm. that I want to commend Ico with. Okay. When we all went into business, I'm just going to say no one would have picked Buckeye. Mm -hmm. Ico picked him, saw something, mm -hmm. and made him a legend and an icon. <laughs> and he still is. <laughs> so we all had to have that extra... That, that DJ to compliment Buckeye. Because okay. Ico made that precedent. You, all, you okay. couldn't just be yourself. So who was Buckeye Butch with? King Ico. So him and King Ico. What did he do? He just started, he just was a, I guess he was just tagging along with Ico. And then Ico took him in and made him famous, to be true. Well, what I mean is, when would he man the tables? And Ico made, might be gone and he we, would man the table I while he was there? As a kid, did he yeah. set up the equipment? Ico showed him how to do everything. Mm -hmm. And I remember as a kid, we're mm -hmm. at the Masonic, and everybody just goes, Buckeye's DJing. <laughs> we're all there. Buckeye's DJing. Right. Was a kid, right? Next thing we know, we say, Buckeye throwing down. Okay. Right? Then next thing you know, we were traveling Buckeye Butch and King yeah. Ico. The names were famous. Yeah. King Ico. It was just like Chief Buckeye J. Strongbow. Uh, they had the great and names. And Danny White was a And Ico White. was talented. He could yeah. sing. He could do everything. So wait, he did Ico? So Ico used to sing on the... Behind no, the no. He was with the. I know that, TNT but I didn't flashers. know when you said he could do that because did you ever see the TNT Flashers? Yes. Okay. See, I never seen them. Yes. So all I know about King Ico is he, he DJ and on the radio. Right. He was a I member don't know of the band. About singing. And when they left to travel, so Ico him, stayed with his family. So him being able to sing, but he was is, the heart and soul. You of say the band. he can sing is just because he. He won't say it. No, he can sing. He's How do talented. you know he can sing? Well, I seen him singing at different things with stereos and. After being okay. around it. In Ico concert? was, yeah, with okay. the TNT Flashers. You have to realize, Billy, uh, I'm, I'm old. old. You're young. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. so I want, I want, every, okay. I want some of those that, that don't know so, what went on back in Steubenville so, and who the TNT Flashers are and the Brown stereos. And, but the but what were singer. they? They were a ba local band group that were really big. They had Jody Sims, they okay. had the popular John Carr on the bass. Okay. Stanley Brown was the leader of the band. Okay. T.C. Brown was their lead singer. Okay. But Ico was that guy in the middle that kept the sound. So right. he's the producer. He's, he, no, he, he's on stage doing it. Okay. He's like okay. a singer. To well, I meant producer. Song. That's what I meant. Like right? he could, the sound system. But he things. will never tell you. You get Ico on this show. You, I he won't to, tell I you nothing. To, he's so modest. It. I can't. But, but, okay. but anyway, he's the glue. Okay. And it kind of hurt them when they went out west and was with Barry White. Ico stayed because he had a job and a family. And a family, yes. Those guys are younger. Yes. And they just did the band. But he's just a, a 